film is very special because uh, all of us have been students and um, all of us have bunk classes, flirted with girls, guys, uh, failed in examinations. I'm hoping that all of that is in the movie. But besides that, there are there are three fresh newcomers in the movie uh, who all of you can see, the three gorgeous people. Can we have a big round of applause for? Alia Bhatt, the very pretty Alia Bhatt, the daughter of filmmaker Mahesh Bhatt, Varun Dhawan, son of director David Dhawan. I've been freaking out on your dad's films. And uh, Siddharth Malhotra, nephew of Manish Malhotra. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge round of applause for student of the year. And now you can ask all the questions, grill them, and they'll answer all your questions. Thank can you so much. I, can I say two things before you start? Yes. Firstly, thank you very much for your glorious introduction. It's always wonderful to hear wonderful words about oneself. Uh, just one minor clarification, because we're in the media house. Siddharth Malhotra is actually not Manish Malhotra's nephew at all. In fact, he's related to uh, no Malhotra no in the industry. <laughs> oh. uh, and, and his father was in the Merchant Navy, and he comes from a completely non-film house. Yeah. Yeah. Secondly, I really have never heard of a, a very a marvelous job at being an AD <laughs> because it's if you be an AD on a film it's the it's like I've been an AD on Dilwale <laughs> Duranil Le Jayenge and I was un forget how good I was but it's like what you call the most thankless job in the world yeah. today specifically thank you for taking the time out uh, because Dharma Productions is probably making its most brave and yet young film brave because <laughs> I believe I believe launching new talent on such a large scale is always a risk factor, especially when it's such a star-ridden industry. So, very honestly, Siddharth Malhotra, Alia Bhatt, and Varun Dhawan are, are not half as nervous as I am because I feel, <laughs> I feel shouldering the responsibility of three careers. And when I see their parents' faces and their relatives' faces, I feel, oh my God, this is what my parents must have felt like way back in 1998 when I made Kuch Kuch Hota Hai. So we're very happy to be here and speak to all of you. And we're happy to answer all your questions um, as long as they're, they're, they have boundaries. <laughs> Uh, but it's wonderful and thank you again. Thank you for all the people who have made this possible, this afternoon possible. So thank you. Thank you. And I will not dance. <laughs> uh, just for now. As suggested by our wonderful host. No, that is something I only do when I get paid. <laughs> just joking. The most obvious question is what are the parallels between Kuch Kuch Hota Hai and this film? I'm so glad that you started with this because there is none, really none. The fact that uh, Kuch Kuch Hota Hai was a young film in its first half and had a college atmosphere is probably the only comparison. Otherwise, this is not a love story, contrary to probably what the poster suggests, uh, because there are two boys and a girl. Uh, Student of the Year is a film about friendship, but the film makes two commentaries, one about friendship and one about its repercussions uh, as a result of competition. And all of us actually in our school and college days have been through that with our group of friends where there was friendship, but there was also that competition that sometimes came in the way. And uh, this film addresses that sentiment. When I, when I look at the film, I was actually, the first scenes of the university actually reminded me a bit of uh, Mohabbate in the sense that the school, you know, looks uh, very I think it's a large British gate, building. possibly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that, uh, but I think the film, uh, Mohabbate has um, a very, uh, uh, it, by virtue of its construct, had this kind of cold and, you know, like it was based, it was shot in England and had this cold and this large Victorian building. We've actually made it, give it the same scale, but we've added a lot of color. Everything is very bright and happy because that's how I see life and that's how I would love to have been uh, in an academic institution off you know I would have loved to have gone to school or who wouldn't have I mean where which had beautiful looking people wearing beautiful looking clothes <laughs> and and actually having of course having real issues because that's always important uh, but definitely the glamour quotient is far more bright and happy so I think the only comparison is the fact that it, they launched, Adi launched New Talent and had a humongous school, and we have the same. But in terms of tone, texture, syntax, the film is completely different. Thank you. I can't, uh, can't uh, resist but ask this question. All the three stars of yours are, look to be in top shape. Did you have to be a tough taskmaster to get them into this shape? Well, I'm no one to speak about fitness. <laughs> uh, but you know, when you're at the, at, at, actually when you have the, the power to make other people run on a treadmill, then why not? Uh, lift a weight. It's called vicarious fitness. Uh, what you can't do to your body, you make sure it is done to others. So I have to say that all three of them, Siddharth and Varun, trained for months for the sports sequences in the film. Uh, there's a triathlon at the end. 
that require them to be in perfect shape. Alia came to me 16 kilos heavier. Uh, she was uh, what you call uh, uh, the pizza burger milkshake uh, 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 kind of phenomenon, uh, which most young kids are allowed to have. Come on, I mean, you know, that's your age to do stuff like that. Uh, so all she did was kind of get onto a dietary regime, hit the gym like never before, and Voila, 16 kilos fatter, uh, slimmer she was uh, in. Uh, she now very proudly gets into a sample size of all designer wear. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, if all of you who actually shop couture will know that sample size is the aspirational size to get into. It's a size 38, if I'm not mistaken, internationally. Alia, as Karan just said, that you were 16 kgs heavier before the movie started. And we've heard so many interviews, seen so many interviews where Karan has talked about how he was so strict with Rani and Kuch Kuch Hota Hai. Uh, so, how many times did he make you cry? Oh, no, he never made me cry, actually. He would shout at me sometimes because I would... Um, I was scared of food eventually, so I would not eat. So that's when he would shout at me, you have to eat. If you faint on me one more time, you see what I do to you. Because I have to faint a lot. That's a problem yeah, that I have. Faints. <laughs> could you rate Karan as a director and how difficult or how hard a taskmaster was he with the two of you? Well, we can't wait. Nobody to rate Karan as a director. We're uh, somewhat uh, figuring out our own way to act. But uh, he's not a taskmaster at all, actually. He's pretty much, uh, he becomes a friend first. He doesn't let us call him sir. I think that's also because he wants to sound young. <laughs> and, uh, and then, uh, yeah, he, I think we were lucky we knew him as 80s. So he's very close to his 80 team. That really helped us to know him as a director. And um, he explains you, I think halfway through, he started explaining us the scene or any situation the same, same way he would explain an established actor. You know, he would, he would give you the same respect, the same professionalism. So um, that just gives you that confidence that, okay, he really thinks that we can do the scene on our own. You know, he'll say, try something. So that really helps you. I think so Karan was great to work uh, as our first film, yeah? I mean. Actually, exactly what Siddharth said. We're not in the position to be rating anyone. But if I was in the position, I would obviously give him a 10 on 10. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know how Karan is with people. He always fools around. He jokes around. He does all that as well on set as well. He's like a friend. But when it's time to like when it's time to go, like when it's time for work to happen, you'll see him with his blinkers on, and he's and he puts on his director's hat, and he's really serious that time. So that time you can't mess with Karan Johar, but uh, otherwise he's he's superb to work with, and I can't, I wouldn't, I'm just blessed by God that I got this opportunity. That's all. So if you were to give out uh, a piece of advice to the three young people <coughs> sitting with you, what is it that you would tell them? That's going to uh, you know hold them steady in this entire journey that they have. Uh, ahead the one thing I tell anyone walking into the limelight is not to believe that it exists uh, to, to treat this like any other job really when you start believing your aura when you start believing your your power when you start believing your impact on other people that's when you start getting aware of it you get conscious of it and it comes into your thought process in a way that can actually make you make decisions that will work against exactly what you work towards mm -hmm. Uh, my, my advice to Varun, to Siddharth and Alia would be that this is another job. Yes, it has some brilliant trappings, but it has a lot of hard work attached to it. And if you start believing the spotlight and you start owning the limelight and you start walking the red carpet like, like no one else exists around you and you drop your, your inherent sense of humility and pave way to arrogance, then that will actually come in your way because then even no destiny chart can actually help your attitude. So I believe stay grounded, stay rooted, and remember, this is like any other job. It just has more beautiful people in it. That's it. <laughs> when you're directing inexperienced actors, how did you have to change your persona? I mean, uh, do you have to because the personal equation is different? You know, I believe, and what I understood in the very first week of my filming, that if you dumb down an, a, an instruction, uh, the actor, however new they are, they get that. And actually that eats into their confidence level. So as Siddharth just mentioned, that that's what I didn't do. I didn't dumb down my instruction. When I used to tell Amit Uncle or Shah Rukh or Kajol or Rani, that I used to tell Shah Rukh, uh, Shah Rukh and I had a statement like, uh, kuch, uh, kuch karna bhai, I used to say. Uh, you know, like, you know, like he, under, he said, ha, kuch karta hun. It was like, you know, like uh, what I meant is bring magic on your own, you know. And that's a similar instruction I gave also. I said, now do something. You know, do something that comes from within. Uh, because I believe sometimes when you're, when you're acting for the very first time, those brilliant rough edges and those completely, uh, what you say, not planned things that happen as a result of probably your nerves or, or lack of experience are sometimes special. I don't think any newcomer should be perfect. I don't think any newcomer should make you say this is it. 
I think your blockbuster performance can only happen with rough edges. Now this is a question for all of you, uh, starting from Karan. Uh, since the movie is called Student of the Year, we want to know your uh, uh, final marks in your final year. That's it. I topped my university. You did? Yes. Awesome. We went to Karan's school and you actually saw his report card, sir. Yeah. Wow. They framed me. I went my, my last year BCom, I topped my university. So academically, I, it just made up for the sports I couldn't uh, couldn't do. I mean, uh, the only sport I ever played and won a gold medal was tug of war because they needed a really overweight boy to fill in the weight bag. <laughs> so way back in school, they asked me, I was in the Red House, and they said, who's above 90 kilos? And only one hand went up. It was mine. <laughs> way back in school. I was bigger than that even in school. So I was in, I, at Tug of War, it was like what I did. And so, yeah. But you'll have to ask them because all three of them were really brilliant. Right. Out. <laughs> Siddharth, Varun and Alia. All of he them just, are looking here and there. Because he knows the answer. That's why he's pulling our leg right now. We really, at least I was a really bad student. Uh, academics was not uh, one of my... Yeah. Varun, Varun. Hi, Varun. I don't know Varun got actually. Alia. I was an average student. <laughs> uh, I mean, I didn't know very badly, but I wasn't interested in studies. I was more interested in drama, competition, sports, dance, acting, everything else. So I was out of the class more than being in the class. In an interview where you said, I was in the class. 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 Varun, I think we are not going to leave that uh, question. I'm a good human being. <laughs> <laughs> Karan, there's been a lot of, uh, well, I should say joy in Pakistan at the inclusion of the Nazia Hassan song. Yes. So how did, how did this come about? Well, I have to say I grew up on the Nazia Hassan fodder of brilliant music in the 80s. I still remember Walkman Hua Karta Tha and that was my, that was the, that I thought the extent of technology then. <laughs> and uh, uh, I used to listen to Disco Diwane the, with Zoeb and uh, Nazia Hassan had come out with uh, the non-film pop album. And then she sang for Star and she sang Aap Jaisa Koi in Kurbani and I was obsessed by Nazi Hassan. And Disco Diwane was just one of my most favorite songs. Many years later, I knew Shan and Sagarika actually recreated it again. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that, w that I think w it was not in an age and space of the internet, etc. So I don't think it gained the kind of momentum. I think that also deserved because it was a fabulous song. And I remember we were struggling with the item song in Student of the Year. It was meant to be a competition song and Vishal Shekhar just said, Hey, should we revisit Disco Divane? And I nearly jumped up in excitement because I was like, I love Disco Divane. And they said, okay, let's revamp it, let's revisit it, let's restructure it and give it like uh, today's 2012 funk edge and keep Nazir Hassan's voice. And that's what we did. We upped the energy, we kept the voice. Sare Gama gave us the rights very, very graciously. And we managed to kind of pull off a coup of sorts by putting it on the album because now copyright is a big thing. We got all the right permissions and I have to say that God bless her soul because um, I think it works both ways in a certain sense that we have gained so much from that song already. It's become humongously popular. But B, I think the generation that didn't know Nazir Hassan like I do uh, is now aware that there was a legend called Nazir Hassan and I hope and pray they all go down the years and catch and bring the music that she so brilliantly created way back in the 80s. I mean, she is and will always be a phenomenon that was too short-lived. Uh, I'm going to say that thank you very much again to all of you. I have to thank Rashid who made this entire event very, very possible. Thank you, him and his company have always been a great support to our cinema. And thank you to Eros, everyone at Eros, uh, to Pranab, to Bhavna, to all of them who are here. Uh, thank you very, very much. And uh, to, uh, to all of you, most importantly, for being here and taking the time out. Thank you very much. <laughs>